morning everyone. Today we will be having the sustainable strategy video 3 of 4 followed by a quiz and then we will discuss about global climate change. So, we will start the video now. This is a 17 minute video followed by a quiz for 5 to 10 minutes. Okay. Now, we will talk about the, the uh, science and technology with innovation. What has been the track record of innovation in the world? In the last 50 years, especially I would I can even say last 75 years, post second world war scenario I am discussing now, from 1945-44 onwards I am discussing. In the past say you can even say 75 years, innovations have played a significant role in improving health, education, transportation, communication, infrastructure, energy, governance, creation of wealth related sectors. Lot of innovation has helped people in many ways. It is not only government, not only industrialists, but across the board you see you know many, 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 many institutions and many, many agencies and many, many businesses, entrepreneurs have been benefited. At the same time, there are serious global challenges related to poverty, hunger, environmental damage, violence against women and minorities, the, the, the religious, religion based uh, violence, community based violence, wars and the issue of security. These issues have not improved in the last 75 years. You should actually, because now so many nations, states have adopted, uh, you know, democracy as a principle of governance. And you should expect actually much better situation today, but may most of the indices on these issues that I have mentioned, that is poverty, hunger, environment, violence, war, security are actually deteriorating. So on one hand, you are creating wealth, on one hand you are seeing progress, on one hand you are applying fruits of science and technology to bring so called quote unquote growth, but that growth seems to be not reaching the right kind of people, it is not probably really you know giving a disease free and a hard work free life to common man and it is not making women feel more safe or it is not removing war from the war prone areas in the in the in the uh, in the world but you are seeing in fact more of them happening so why this kind of thing is happening is a matter that we need to really worry about and we will have to probably do something more within society within community even at international level and also use some other tools and other uh, tricks by which you can probably bring more more uh, 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 development so that people who are otherwise worrying they will probably consider uh, the better alternatives rather than going to war and trying to divide society so the 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 the, the breakthrough breakthroughs of innovations have roots in defense and related funding is one of the issues that people are discussing seriously all over the world that much of the, 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 the developmental science and developmental technology, lot of chemical technology, lot of mechanical uh, 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 technology has developed because somebody wanted so many bullets manufactured uh, per second, so many wanted so much, so much, so much of you know, guns or uh, long ranging missiles or some kind of war uh, uh, ammunition. Best brains in the world are busy solving problems of rich and do not have the real problems to be solved. This is a problem, unfortunately, this is my opinion and I, I have no difficulty in putting it because this is the way I read reality around me. As a result, complex problems of the poor do not get you know, noticed and worked by the right talent. And I think this is the challenge that as a country, our country faces today. That while world would say something as quote unquote a modern, quote unquote a cutting edge, quote unquote advance and what I need to do is to make sure that half a million villages in my country has good drinking water, has good sanitation facilities, all the girls are able to go up to 12th standard without any difficulty, my government is willing to give free education to them, I have to make sure that the teacher wants to stay in the school so that uh, uh, the, the girls and boys can get good education but teacher does not have, his own students do not, ch children do not want to go to the same school where he is teaching. So that you know that 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 difference has to be removed. That it has to be a, a good school 
good hospital, good entertainment, good college, you know, nearby, and good roads connectivity to the larger places of the city, so that when they go to college, you know, they are able to come home frequently. All that support has to be given. And today we cannot expect that after 65 years of independence, some villages are still not getting enough drinking water. They are still drinking very raw water from river, which may be contaminated by sewage put by the the cities and villages upstream. That is not acceptable situation. We have to really change that. So the 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 issue issues are not always to be solved by high tech, but they are to be solved by appropriate tech. So the issue is not that you apply you know very expensive technology. But you apply a right model of technology. Issue is not that whether you apply technology or not, whether you whether you will apply technology for whose benefit. So these are the questions that we are asking. So totally different kinds of questions we will have to ask if you really care for you know the poverty, inequality, and insecurity of certain people in our country. We will have to really worry about it. Still we have atrocities. Still we have discrimination against women. Still we have discrimination on caste. Still we have hungry people. Still, we have villages which are not supplied water, power, or 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 sanitation. Now, how can we how can we accept that after 65 years of independence? So, this is the challenge that modern India had, and slowly at government level and and, and also at the state government level, we are taking we are we are possessing these problems as the real problems of India. So, uh, country becoming smarter and country becoming more modern means actually addressing these problems more in a more responsible manner. And there is definitely there is no there are no two opinions today in our country that all the good people will sit across the table and they will say exactly same thing which I am saying, and uh, I am involved in several committees of central government and state government. This is exactly the sentiment uh, sentiment that people are actually uh, expressing. So it is time to change this paradigm. It is also an opportunity for creating the Indian model of development, and this whole effort is actually in that direction. That how do we really say that I will do these these things which are relevant to my country, my people, my uh, society, and then everybody will go. The table overall table will go up rather than only few people and creating an you know island of excellence or I, I, island of richness instead of doing that. Everybody is benefited. I think that is where we have to really uh, uh, you know shift the paradigm. So therefore, the government of India made efforts and created policy for science and technology for development. It is not quote unquote environmental policy. You might say, why are we discussing in the environmental policy and law? Why are we discussing policy on science and technology? But I sincerely believe you cannot bring sustainable development. You cannot do good to ecology and environment until you have a very strong science and technology innovation based policy. Synergizing science, technology, and innovation is the basic uh, intention of this particular policy. That you would like to, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, bring the science, technology, innovation together. And then it is believed the hypothesis is that there will be synergistic effect when we combine three, three together. Science alone, technology alone, or innovation alone probably will not be able to achieve few things. But if you put these three things together. Then you are going to be able to do something fantastic. Extent to which science, technology, and innovation enterprise integrates vertically and creates social and economic goods through innovation with impact on the national development process. There is discovery element in science. That's why each one of us is actually attracted to science only because of that beauty, so to speak, about science. There is also solution dimension to modern science. We are attracted, and we really want. We are we all are well-meaning individuals who come to science and technology, and we would like to put our knowledge to, uh, you know, at the mouth of some problem, so that the problem is solved. Balancing and interconnecting discovery and solution dimension of science and technology science needs new mechanisms and pathways, and this is the intention why this particular science, technology, uh, and innovation-related policy is put together, enrolling Indian society. And Indian industry, as major stakeholders in this process, is one of the intentions of this particular policy. That there are excellent people in industry, there are excellent in, uh, uh, individuals in society, which may not, you know, look like as scientists or as, as good engineers, but they have engineering skills, they have scientific skills. How do we put together? How do we nurture them? But doesn't have to have only science degree or engineering degree to do that. 
we can in our walk of life also we can apply it everybody can apply it how do we how do we broaden the 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 the, the, the space of science and technology so what are the priorities of sti policy 2013 nourishing the roots of science by promoting excellence focus on science education and teaching and attraction of talents to science one of the very important things there are more scholarships are paid to women there are women scientists special programs you are doing same thing for the tribal people you are doing same thing for deep rural area people we are trying to bring everybody to the envelope in under the under the envelope so that the 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 the, the community the individual uh, is benefited partnership among stakeholders to scale research and development success something becoming successful in r and d laboratory is good thing but how do you really go to the next step where the partnership of stakeholders also is there so that the immediately the solution is found or possibility solution is found somebody else is taking that baton and running further further round make it more perfect make it more perfect and then finally it becomes an implemented technology so therefore grand challenge problems and matching development of resources for example we are we have put a grand challenge for pavai lake can we really do something for pavai lake what are your ideas can one thing be done it may not solve all problems of pavai lake doesn't mean doesn't matter but can you do that one thing properly then you know hajar hundred students thousand students coming together thousand minds put together will be far better solution than one person doing it however good or bad he or she is but putting thousand people will be definitely far more better than putting one or two person so that kind of thing so grand challenge performance reward relationship so performance related incentives pris for basic research so you are saying that you know if you perform well however basic research it is however it may not be applied but still that you are creating a possibility and communicating and doing good research then you will be benefited delivery system for science science technology and innovation outputs to stakeholders that bringing them the two groups together and how do we really do that is definitely uh, a big challenge partnerships with eco uh, socio economic uh, ministries and state governments for enhancing the stakeholder value of science technology innovation enterprise what are the further priorities attracting private sector investment into r&d many times government cannot do everything because it doesn't have funding to do additional things already there are less there is less funding for many essential functions of government how can it take up a take up new so then find new people who will be beneficiary also and who will be also interested stakeholders in in seeing that science technology innovation becomes successful so r&d for public and social goods objectives through public private partnership models that if something is 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 useful for society then you know that can be that can be uh, done done with, with with preference combining excellence with relevance there is also another thing that you are good in doing certain thing can you take a problem of relevance so that your good heart your good combination ability to solve problem is combined with the the right kind of problem closing gap in translation research, translational research leading to application of r&d finding you see to it that somebody's good work is applied so you give incentive for that excellence with relevance gaining global competitiveness through collaboration sometimes you are not good in something but some other people are better than you there is you don't become small by collaborating in fact you become far more the you know faster in bringing development if you collaborate so strategic partnership and alliances with other nations for value addition to national programs and addressing global issues but strategic alliance that you have to know that i need more research in drinking water i need more research in removal of pesticide from ground water i need more research in presence of nitrogen nitrate in my drinking water resource what do i do so that that is removed more efficiently at lower cost if with lower power consumption with a, with with minimum human intervention can i set up such technologies so that poor people the the remote areas without which do not have enough power to consume those will be benefited i need to give power to the the, to the energy supply to the remote places can i go for renewables so that i don't have to take expensive you know power lines to them can i can i i am importing much of the much of the india's petroleum resource is imported can i really uh, make india more uh, independent in terms of imports 
can i really do that how what kind of empowering is required what kind of technology will have to be supported world may say per megawatt production this particular technology is not good enough but for indian context especially going in a particular region maybe that is still going to be proving more cost effective for me so, so my solution and my problems are known to me how do i address them more responsibly so participation in global consortia for mega science projects so see where the where is the world going you know what is what is in it for india and we you know we create a, a very create a very competent manpower which will which will which will sort of you know have one eye out of window in the world but also when i concentrate on our ground so that you know we are doing some action on on our uh, plane at the same time we are capable of understanding what is internationally happening right so that is another uh, thing so what are the goals for science technology innovation policy of 2013 serving india by connecting performance with excellence and relevance accelerate the pace of discovery and delivery of science led solution for serving the national goal of faster sustainable and inclusive growth please look at these three words very important for us and we should have sensitivity for all the three you would definitely like to bring growth fast it is already late for so many people 65 years after independence if you are not giving drinking water if you are not giving power if you are not empowering our women if you are not bringing the the the, the remote area people and the tribals into the main economy you are not giving them opportunity it is late for them so it has to be inclusive growth it has to be growth you cannot keep them where they are it has to be growth but it should not go you know as a as a bubble and burst after few years it has to be sustainable so faster sustainable and inclusive growth is the mantra that is basically uh, you know we would like to achieve a strong and viable science research and innovation system for high technology led path for india the uh, non uh, acronym it as srishti is a policy goal so having srishti is a policy goal that srishti that universe is basically combining science research and innovation for high technology led path of india so that you are using really the fruits of scientific uh, understanding but then basically you are addressing it for addressing the problems of the faster sustainable and inclusive growth of people who have still remained outside the 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 the, 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 the circle of development
today we will be uh, talking and discussing a bit of on uh, global climate change and its impact. So, what does the word global climate change means to you? Anyone this sounds similar Mane recognize the word global climate change right. So, what do you think is global climate change? By human activities such as ok. So, but before we know what is climate change, we should be knowing what is climate. So, what is climate? Climate is a condition of atmosphere at a particular location over a long period of time. It is the long term summation of atmospheric elements over a sh shorter period of shorter time period constitutes the weather. So, is weather and climate similar for you, the same term for you? Three four months. Anyone? You are saying something. Three four months? Okay. Average behavior of changes. Right. So we can, and in another words, say that climate is a long term pattern of weather in a particular location. Right. Then what is weather? Weather can change in hour to hour, day to day, month to month, not even months. We, if three months, we cannot say that is a, a climate of a places like that. That is also weather. So, when we see that a region have a weather pattern usually tracked at least 30 years, 30 years is the main important, 30 years ek jaga ke upar agar ek hi weather prevail kar rahe, then we can say that the climate of that region is such. From this image, it is very clear that weather and climate, weather is a short term phenomena, whereas a climate is a long term pattern of weather. If it is raining, we can say it is rainy weather, the climate is not rainy. So, if we see the whole globe is separated or designated into certain climatic zones, right? On the equator, what kind of climate do you think prevails? The tropical climate, depending on which the rainforest, the regions are also described. Another thing that you have to be very, uh, you have to keep in mind is this temperature, uh, the, the timeline. See the timeline is in days for weather, but the timeline is in years for climate and the term and the 30 years is a very important uh, number. So, that all our climate uh, people or environment science people, we have designated 30 years to be a period for defining a climate. So, we now know what is a climate, what is weather. So, what is climate change? Anybody? So, we know the climate change is happening, the weather, the climate is becoming different. So, what is the climate that is changing for a particular location? Climate change refers to long term shift in temperature and weather pattern two parameters, temperature and weather pattern. From that we can define a climate change. If today is hot, tomorrow is cold, we would not say that the climate is changing. We have to observe it for a longer period of time and suppose uh, from 1900 to 2000 over a period of 100 years, how the weather or the climate was. And now after 2000, what is the climate? 
then we can see a trend line. If the temperature is constantly increasing for 100 years and then, then we can say the climate is changing. The earlier it was much cooler and uh, calm, now it is becoming hotter. hotter. So, such shifts can be due to sun's activity and volcanic activity, those were we used to think those are the main activities that control the climate change. But since 1800 onwards, the activities of human, those are also impacting the climate of an area, primarily due to burning of fossil fuel, you can group it together as fossil fuel, oil and gas. So, due to burning of this, the pollutions that it is creating is leading to what effect? Climate Before climate change, if we tell that this for burning of fossil fuel, use of uh, more gas and oil, releasing of emissions of gases is leading to what kind of effect? We have read in class 11, 12. Huh? Greenhouse, greenhouse gases. What are these? These are greenhouse gases that are creating greenhouse effect, due to which what is happening? The global temperature is increasing, due to which what is happening? There is a global shift in the temperature pattern of a region or an area. So, we can say that is the main reason generating of greenhouse gases and emission of those gases and it is creating a greenhouse effect leading to global rise in the temperature. So, energy, industry, transport, building, agriculture, land use are among the main sector of generator of greenhouse gases. Each and every sector is generating greenhouse gases and creating a playing a, playing a main role in the global climate change. Now, like in a, nowadays, sir was also talking one day, one day that in uh, flight tickets, they are mentioning that carbon footprint carbon emission, the lesser the carbon emission they are putting a green leaf, they are eco friendly or they are uh, not creating much pollution. So, every sector is in railways also those sectors uh, those things are coming on. In every company they have to keep their carbon footprint to minimum, they are plant they have to plant trees to reduce their carbon emission. Why do you think they have to plant trees to reduce carbon emission? to balance the pollution causing. Right? If new trees or more trees are there, then it will absorb the carbon dioxide and in that, that the, the in other way the greenhouse gases or the effect of the greenhouse will reduce. So, some of the effects of climate change. So, one effect one very prominent effect of climate change is the rise in the sea level that is happening globally and those kind of things are affecting the temperature and the climate of the area and the weather of the area and in this way there are more hydroclimatic extremes, hydroclimatic extremes we are saying that are occurring like floods, heat waves are coming, there are droughts all, all over the world. So, these are some of the effects of climate change. So, one of my area is flood. So, I am working in this a field where to understand how this flood is working or the how the process is working, how we are generating the flood, how the system is working. A very important uh, body in uh, international body is the intergovernmental panel on climate change. IPCC, you are in this department of ESED, in this uh, 5 years, 4 years course, you will have to remember this IPCC reports. In IPCC reports, working committee 1, AR6, IPCC AR6 reports is the latest report, where they have given you certain policies, certain guidelines to manage and control this kind of effect. So, the report says that new estimate of the chances of crossing the global 
level of 1.5 degree Celsius in the next decade and, find, and finds, the un, finds that unless there is immediate rapid and large scale reduction of greenhouse emission limiting, uh, limiting warming to close to 1.5 degree Celsius or even 2, 2 degree will be beyond reach. When you have to take some steps to curb down this effect, otherwise in coming future the temperature will keep on rising and it will have adverse effect on our society. So, floods we can see one of the effect of global climate change is flooding. So, why does flooding occur? Can you define how floods occur, but why does flooding occurs? There can be many reason. So, because of rain, very common reason that if it rains, it will flood, right. But in some places, there are places where if it rains, it does not flood, then why are those places not flooding and other places are getting flood? Amount of improper drainage, right. It is raining. If it is everything is every drainage system is work clean, properly planned, then it will drain out within few hours. But improper drainage is one of the reason. And why improper drainage? What do you think Mumbai, why do Mumbai has improper drainage and why do Mumbai suffer from flooding every monsoon and like pockets of Mumbai are flooded? Population. So, population badne se kya hoga? What is the term used for buildings? Cons real, estate. Ah, real estate is very commercial in, in general uh, technical term urbanization. urbanization. So, another cause of flooding is also urbanization, right. So, apart from climate change, urbanization also play a key role in a flooding of those areas. In rural areas, there are floodings, but they might be due to other reasons. So, flood can cause due to various reasons. One of the main reason is excessive rainfall, which is the effect of climate change we can say. Why the excessive rainfall? The frequency of rainfall is increasing, the intensity of rainfall is increasing. In this uh, like month of September, we have a dry spell of rain, right? There was no rain. You are all of anyone in Bombay, right? So, there was no rain, it was very dry. But August, there was huge rain. So, there is also imbalance in raining intensity, right? The pattern or the how much rain is being, uh, what is the raining uh, amount of rain that has been happening in the first half of the monsoon, middle half, and the retreating monsoon. So, this improper distribution of rain is also playing an effect, right. Another cause is overflowing of the rivers. If the rivers are like you say drainage, so river is one of the main natural drainage, right, that drains the water of the overland and channels it to the sea or the nearest a larger river. So, the carrying capacity or the, uh, if the river is not cleaned every year, if the carrying capacity is becoming low. So, that will lead to overflowing of the river and flooding of the areas. Urban flooding is another thing where due to rapid urbanization, the city is expanding and it without any plan here and there, the, they are uh, rising the buildings, they are rising small, small houses, roads are not constructed properly. So, those kind of things also leads to urban flood. Another one main cause is dam failure, structural failure. Recently, uh, where did you find that dam failed and uh, Kerala. Kerala. So, dam failure was there leading to flooding of the nearby catchment, the catchment of the flood of, of the dam. Natural calamity, this is a part where again the climate change is playing role. Various 
natural calamities are coming, tsunami, cyclones that are hitting, due to which there will be flooding of the nearby areas or the regions. Now, coastal flooding, India is having the, having a larger coastline like the whole of the V is the coastline and it is exposed to the sea. Any kind of tropical cyclone hitting every year we are at least having two or three cyclones hitting from Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea and, uh, and that is causing huge damage to the coastal cities like Gujarat, Mumbai, Vishakapatnam, we see Chennai, we see every year this uh, West Bengal, the lower part of West Bengal, they are hitting, they are being hit by the cyclones and the, we are having flooding problems due to that. So, one we say can say the frequency is increasing, the impact of these flooding events are causing huge damage to the society. What kind of damage? What kind of damage do you expect from floods? Damage to buildings, life also, any other things that gets dis disrupted due to flooding? whole ecosystem is disturbed, what are the parts of that can you just, one is buildings and infrastructure that and bridges are being flown away over the rivers, transport system, transport system gets affected very badly, people is cut down from the main part of the society. Recently which part of the country had landslides, huge amount of flooding due to which the transport system was, roads were being flown away, Uttarakhand and Himachal, Himachal was badly affected, Shimla was badly affected, landslides were there, main highways were gone, right. So this is a recent image I guess the one of the uh, mandir was there which was under water, the nearby bridges were cut when it flown out. This is the picture of that Shimla, one, one whole area, the landslide was there, the whole buildings and the roads were gone. People, transport system breaks down, so people has to use this kind of emergency boats and clear the area and provide food to the people who are stuck in these areas. People houses get affected like properties get damaged. The poor people living in this kind of uh, thatched houses or huts, they get, get affected to a larger extent. Roads, transport system, vehicles get damaged, large insurance companies has to pay large amount of claims to this uh, transport systems and all. Life is at danger, right? So, why do you think we are studying sustainable development, management, plannings, and all these things? Right. So, we are trying, we are in a way trying to do all these things to reduce. What we are trying to reduce? We are trying to reduce the, trying to stop the climate change from happening or reduce the impacts and effects of climate change, right? Another extreme event other than the flood, so due to all this floodings and all, there is an immediate need to implement flood management techniques. My tap, my topic of uh, research is on flood management, right. I am planning how to predict flood or how to, why do we predict flood? We can plan early, manage, we can understand what are the outcomings that we will be having. So, we will manage, we will plan accordingly, we will plan evacuation paths, we plan protective walls such that the river does not cross the limits and hit the land. So, this kind of are known as flood management 
techniques and there are some there are main two ways in which we can stop floods like structural measures. So, these are some of the structural measures that causes uh, that can be helpful to reduce the effects of flood. We cannot stop flood right, we cannot stop flood from happening, we cannot stop flood from, uh, from uh, we cannot stop rain from happening, you have to control its impact we have to uh, reduce its impact right. So, those are the structural measures like barrages, uh, dams, infrastructural works, improvement of the river works, river, dra river walls, embankments should be raised, diversion of river is one of the one of a new technique where we are trying to change the path of river or divert the river such that it will not impact the city. So, apart from the structural measures there are many non-structural measures right. So, and water uh, central water commission CWC one of the um, main body of India that is giving out what should we do handbooks are there, they are giving guidelines to understand this mechanism and how to do what the, the, the things to do to reduce flood. So, another part is a non-structural part of the flood control or flood management. What do you think the non-structural part is? Structural part is very clear that we will build walls, we will build dams, we will build uh, like proper river works. What is the non-structural part of flood management that needs to be done? Evacuating people, Evacuating people right. Emerge, that is the emergency purpose right. If a flood is hitting, you have having a proper evacuation plan, how many people, which are the areas affected, how do we know which are the areas affected beforehand, how do we understand that? Anyone from behind? Past occurrences. So, what has happened is the in the past will help us predict the future right. So, we will understand the past occurrences of flood plus past occurrences of rainfall we understand the trend and then we will project it and understand the future. And if we can predict the future very appropriately or correctly we can save the destruction of the flood. So, flood modeling, flood prediction these are one of the non-structural measures that can be ten, taken. Government are implementing flood, uh, flood warning systems. So, before the flood is coming, SMS is coming to the phone that uh, they are, uh, there will be flood, this much area should be cleared. So, they are the non-structural measures. We will just stop, touch on this topic of heat waves also, which is the other extreme no rain leading to leading to droughts, no rain for a month then the farmers will not get the water and the lands are drying up. So, that is also other impacts of global change, global climate change. So, heat wave is effect is another part another extreme that is impacting the society. So, here you can see the heat wave map of India like this pa this patch of uh, India is getting heat waves every year and you can see how the heat wave is also increasing with with time 2010 2011 12 how it has increased in last 10 years. So, some of the impacts of heat waves are like heat stress can also reduce physical capacity and motor and cognitive performance of a person. It can give heat uh, heart attacks, it can give heat strokes. So, there are very various measures that has been like put up by this IPCC also has put up some of the measures to 
get yourself to save yourself from the heat waves right like stay inside the house dress light color clothes keep hydrated eat less find a shade stay smart bring your pets indoor consider saving your pets make sure that they have plenty of water feed them with feed them less than normal so keeping yourself fit is also a part where you can save yourself from the effects of heat wave okay. so you can understand that how what we are reading and studying in sustainable development is also a bigger goal bigger uh, uh, picture is this will have an effect in the global climate change if we are working more towards sustainable development we can somewhere reduce down the effects of the global climate change thank you